Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, students, welcome back in, the, in, in our final part of this topic, Harun Rashid. Uh, we have discussed about uh, discussed how Harun came to power. We discussed the challenges that he faced, the rivals that rose against Harun Rashid. We also discussed about the the challenges when uh, the Persians, Persian family was brought down uh, by the Arabs. And again, um, we also discussed about the challenges, the external challenges that he faced from the Byzantine. And then we said Harun died at the age of 23 at a place called Sanaban. Sanaban uh, is in Persia. That is where Harun died and was buried there. Now, we want to wind up this topic about Harun by looking at how generally Harun was character wise. Harun was very religious. He was a very religious person. Uh, he regularly performed the rituals of Islam, he regularly performed the prayers. Remember, we say Harun was a learned person. He learned from the Persians. During the era of uh, his father, Muhammad al Mahdi, uh, the Persians were in charge of uh, education, military, and uh, also uh, the finances. Yahya, Yahya, who later became the Prime Minister during the time of Harun, was the, the, the teacher in the palace. That we learned from him. And uh, he grew as a religious person. That's why the mother, you remember we talked about Al-Hadi and uh, Harun, as the, as the children of Muhammad al Mahdi. The mother of, uh, of Harun loved him so much because of his religious nature. He was so humble, very social. Um, he also did a lot of optional uh, activities. It is said that uh, uh, Harun Rashid, when they, they, they counted, he used to prostrate around 100 times daily. 100 times is not easy. That means for you to be able to, to achieve that, you have to perform all the five daily prayers. Five daily prayers has 17 rakah, and each rakah has two. If there are 17 times, two, those are 34 already. Now talk of the Kamliya and the Badia for each and every every prayer. That is two before Fajri, two before Dhuri and Asri, uh, and after after uh, and uh, Asri and Maghrib and Isha. Now, if you add all these rakat and each one of them having two, it is that Harun uh, used to perform hundred hundred prostrations. Add the Duha, add the, the Witri, the Tahajjud. He was deeply deeply uh, religious. He used to go for Hajj several times. He said he, used to, he went for Hajj nine times. And during all this time, he used to read caravans. Harun used to, he never used to go alone. He used to take along with him some poor people who could not afford their expenses of going for Hajj. Therefore, Harun was, a, from this we can uh, conclude that he was a, a very, very religious uh, person. Uh, he even paid he said that he was very, very generous that uh, he, he used to donate, it is said daily, he used to donate almost 1,000 dirham to the poor. That means if poor people used to come to his house with several problems, various problems, and Harun used to assist them. Um, he was also a very respected uh, scholar. Like I said, he was a scholar of jurisprudence. He used to sit among the scholars you remember the, the story of uh, Abu Abbas? Abu Abbas established this kingdom on the line of uh, religion because that time the Umayyad kingdom, those later Umayyad leaders, displayed ungodliness behavior. Therefore, he wanted to be opposite of those leaders because if he could not um, do that, then the other the, the, the Muslim could not have supported uh, supported them. Um, he was a, also a very good public speaker. He was an orator. That means an orator is someone who can convince people. He can uh, give a speech that everybody is going to to admire. People lo loved him so much. He was so social. He was uh, attending uh, each and every social activity that was occurring in there in the kingdom because of this 
Muslims, non-Muslims who are living among the uh, within the Islamic Empire, were very, very comfortable living with with Harun. He was also very dedicated to his duties. You know, when you are chosen as a leader, you are chosen to serve people. Therefore, for you to be dedicated, you're supposed to be where people are. You know, it, it is unlike uh, our situation today that some, when someone is looking for a seat, he wants to be elected. He is with the people. He goes to their barriers, he goes to their weddings, he attends to their problems. The moment he is given the responsibility, he does the opposite. That time he was doing, it was not his responsibility because there were leaders who were elected to carry out those duties. But people uh, carried those duties to send a message to people that uh, maybe it's good. But what happens later, when they are given the responsibility, they abandon that responsibility. Therefore, um, problems occur. The, but Harun was different. He used to roam. He used to roam uh, at night to find out uh, problems that the citizens were having. And uh, the ones he could solve, he solved immediately. He was a very good soldier and a very competitive commander. Remember, um, the name Rashid came because of uh, leading an army. We say his father gave him a responsibility of, uh, of uh, attacking Mesopotamia. That time Mesopotamia was a very, very powerful empire. And uh, at the age of 18, Harun was the leader of that army. He successfully brought it down. When he won against the, uh, the Mesopot Mesopotamians, um, Harun was given the name Rashid. This one proves that he was also a, a very good commander. Now, if you combine those characters, a religious person, very social, dedicated, generous, and then this time an army commander, you can conclude that Harun was a very, very competent leader. At the same time, is the reason why, during his era, the Abbasid kingdom was able to, to do a lot of out of things. Let's look at what he contributed uh, uh, based on this leadership. Number one, he maintained peace. If you can, if you look at the history of Harun, he said Harun ruled for 23 years. He took three years to deal with the opposition. All those revolts were brought down within three years. For 20 years, people enjoyed peace. Now, when there is peace, the integrity of the empire grew began now respecting the Islamic Empire. He also uh, uh, strengthened the postal services. Remember we said the postal services when you are in two, from two, you thought that uh, the postal services were established by Omar bin Fatwa. But during his time, he, he, he made it more efficient by introducing more centers uh, to drop letters. Most of those days there were no phones. You cannot ask me the, the, the phone number of Harun. I'll not give you because that it was not there, but they used to use uh, letters. Therefore, the, the distribution was more efficient during the era of, of Harun. He also constructed many roads, bridges, wells, canals. This one assisted uh, in irrigation, in agriculture, and also uh, on, the, on the way to Mecca, he also uh, uh, built some wells that were assisted the pilgrims when going for Hajj. He established many mosques, madrasas, hospitals, libraries, asylums. Remember, so many uh, soldiers were killed because, because as a result of protecting the kingdom. Therefore, most people were left homeless. Therefore, he built some asylum to try and uh, assist this, this kind of people. Those, uh, those who are living in a hostile environment could get a safe place for them to to promote education, the libraries were all over, hospitals for treatment, and so on and so forth. Also, he took Baghdad as a, a, a center of trade. Therefore, he beautified. As you are aware, for business to, uh, to succeed anywhere, it has to get a good environment. Therefore, he also introduced the use of coins. He brought some coins from German, Sweden, uh, and, Europe, and other European countries. Remember, uh, the common type of business that ca was carried out during the, that time before he came to power was uh, butter trade, whereby you exchange goods for, 
for good. But when it came to power, he introduced the use of currency, whereby you exchange goods for, for money. Uh, he also uh, encouraged learning uh, activities. He enlarged the translation bureau. He took some um, materials from other tribes and translated them into Arabic so that Arabs can learn. Uh, Abu Jafar al Mansur established uh, this department, but uh, when it came to power, he tried to increase uh, this kind of. Uh, he also encouraged some foreign scholars to settle in their empire so that they can be able to bring knowledge to the, to the Arab. Now, this one brings us to the end of our, our discussion about Harun. Uh, inshallah, in our next discussion, we will talk about Mahmoud. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa